Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at the alpha of a trading strategy or an asset in general. So we are going to answer if a certain trading strategy beats the market. And also we are going to check if one of my presented strategies actually beat the market. First things first, let's take a look at some concepts we need. We need the capital asset pricing model formula, which you see here. This is the expected return of the asset or trading strategy. To keep things simple, I'm referring to the asset as the trading strategy from now on. This is the risk free rate, the return you're getting for holding e.g. a treasury bond. I'm calling that RF from now on. And according to the CAPM, the expected return minus the risk free rate has to be the exact same as the beta, I'll go into details on that one in a second, just see it as a factor for now, times the expected return of the market minus the risk reward rate. So what is this beta? The beta is the covariance of the assets return and market return divided by the variance of the market return. So how do you interpret this beta? A beta of 1 would mean that the asset is moving in the same direction as the market and to the exact same extent as the market. A beta higher than 1 indicates that the asset is moving in the same direction as the market, but also to a higher extent than the market. A beta between 0 and 1 would mean the asset is moving in the same direction as the market, but to a lower extent than the market. A negative beta would mean that the asset is moving inverse to the market. In the CAPM world, the alpha would be an additional summand, which always would need to be zero so that the CAPM formula holds. Or simply put, there is no alpha in the CAPM world. So we will need to find a way to prove that there actually is an alpha in the real world. So what do we need to do? We are running a regression looking like this. In finance, this is referred to the single index model. And this is a simple linear regression taking the asset return minus RF as the dependent variable and the market return minus RF, only this part, as the independent variable. The coefficient of the independent variable will be the estimated beta. Think about it. If the beta is giving you the relationship between asset movement and market movement, the slope of this regression line has to be your estimated beta. The intercept of this regression is your alpha. This is the part independent from the market movement. And if this one is positive, and also significant, you will have an edge. So running a simple linear regression, taking the dependent variable return minus risk free rate and the independent variable market return minus risk free rate, we will get both parameters, the alpha as the regression intercept and the beta as the regression coefficient. We are applying this regression on one of my presented strategies. In specific, we are going to test the survivorship by his free momentum trading strategy on the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 will be our market return reference. Just as a side note from my academic experience back in the days, you are usually taking the whole market, meaning not only the 500 biggest companies, but all listed companies. So common academic practice would be to consider the whole market. But in practice, nobody cares about the whole market, but rather about a benchmark, such as the S&P 500. I highly recommend to watch the momentum video, as I assume you know how the strategy is set up and how the returns of the strategy are calculated. I will link the video below. So let's take a look at our game plan. What has to be done to run this regression in Python? You have to pull the time series of monthly returns of the strategy. 
then you have to pull a proxy for the risk-free rate, e.g. a treasury bond. Then you have to pull a monthly return series of the market return. And then you have to bring together the monthly returns and the risk-free rate. Then you set up the dependent variable, so monthly returns minus risk-free rate, and you set up the independent variable, market returns minus risk-free rate. There's a lot of data manipulations involved in that, so do not underestimate that. Finally, you run the linear regression and then the most important part, you interpret the results. So do it on your own. It's quite a challenging task, so good luck with that. Of course, I will do it in the next one step by step. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming video.